Hello learners. When you enter in your class, you use different teaching learning approaches, different methods to interact with your learners, to communicate to your learners the content which you want to present, to provide an opportunity to your learners to construct their ideas, to construct their meanings. And we broadly classify these approaches as learner-centered approach, teacher-centered approach or group-centered approach. So in today's discussion, I'm basically going to talk about learner-centered approaches. What do we mean by learner-centered approaches? The approach where learner is at the center, the content, the teacher, the instructional design and instructional methods, all are revolving around the learner. All keeps learner at the center of planning. When you think about the content, you think about the learner that how this content can be provided to the learner. When a teacher plans, he or she plans that how he or she will communicate with the learner. Who is the learner? What is the mental and educational level of the learner? What is the attitude, aptitude and interest of the learner? And which methodology is appropriate for a particular level of learner? So when learner is at the center of planning, either the planning of the content or the planning of the instruction, or when teacher is thinking about to deliver the content, those approaches are known as learner-centered approaches. You know, in learner's accountability, learner's inquiry, discussion with the learner, collaboration with the learner, creation of knowledge by the learner, and reflection by the learner on the ideas or the issues discussed by you. So everywhere, in learner-centered approach, learner is at the center. So what a learner-centered approach is? This idea of learner-centered approach basically started with the humanistic movement in psychology. And it is believed that in learner-centered approach, learner assumes responsibility of learning in the supervision of the teacher for decision, action, and consequences. In a teacher-centered approach, the decision is of the teacher, the actions are decided by the teacher, and the consequences are also planned by the teacher. So in learner-centered approach, it is the learner who takes responsibility for all these things. Not only he or she takes the responsibility of his or her learning, but also learners acquire skills and abilities through various activities under the guidance of teacher. What do you do as a teacher in learner-centered approach? A teacher arranges, manages, and guides learning activities which are based upon needs, interests, and cognitive development of learners. Teacher uses a variety of behaviors to initiate, to nurture, and to maintain a facilitative learning environment. So teacher's role is only to provide a facilitative learning environment to maintain that environment so that learners can learn, they can construct their own meaning. In any learner-centered approach, you will find that learners are active participants in the process of learning. They engage themselves in need-based activities under your supervision. They select the content, activities, and experiences according to their academic and social needs. So here the selection of the activities and experiences is not being done by you as a teacher. You just provide them situation. You just provide them opportunity. They select the activity. They decide the content. They plan the experiences which they want to gain to learn something. So what is your role? Your role is basically more as facilitator and learners at the end become independent learners. So how this learner-centered approach is different from teacher-centered approach? If you try to analyze the differences between learner-centered approaches and teacher-centered approaches, you can simply say that in teacher-centered approaches, focus is on teacher as an expert, but in learner-centered approaches, focus is on learner with teacher as a facilitator. In teacher-centered approach, Whatever the teacher knows about a skill or content is important. In learner-centered approach, how the learner will use the knowledge or skill or content, that is more important. In teacher-centered approaches, teachers talk, learners listen. 
in learner centered approaches teacher models learner interact with teacher and with each other means the peers in teacher centered approaches most of the time every learner is segregated from each other and they are working alone but in learner centered approaches they work in group they work in peers and sometimes they also work alone in teacher centered approaches it is the teacher who constantly monitor and corrects the learners at every step but in learner centered approach learners work without constant monitoring and correction a teacher intervenes whenever learners want some guidance from the teacher the teacher generally chooses the topic in teacher centered approaches but in learner centered approaches it is the learner which has some say or some choice when a topic is being selected teacher centered approaches teacher evaluate students learning but in learner centered approaches learners evaluate their own learning though tutors also evaluate so there are many such approaches like problem solving approaches there inquiry approaches there naturalistic inquiry is there so let us talk about one very important learner centered approach that is known as inquiry approach actually john dewey in his book how we think presented it as an alternative approach he said that knowledge is an outcome of inquiry and resource in further inquiry inquiry involves identifying problems posing questions and seeking answers so what learners do in inquiry approach learners pose their own questions regarding the topic under study stephenson also talks about inquiry approach when he said that inquiry honors the complex and interconnected nature of knowledge construction striving to provide opportunities for both teachers and learners to collaboratively build tests and reflect on their learning whereas gagne when he proposed his famous hierarchy of learning he proposed that inquiry is apparently a set of activities characterized by problem solving approach in which each newly encountered phenomena become a challenge for thinking so if you analyze all these definitions of different educationists and practitioners you can say that learners become actively involvement in learning process when it is inquiry approach why because they act upon their curiosity and interest they develop questions about the issues or the situations presented to them they think their own ways through controversies and dilemmas they look at the problem in analytical way that how they can solve the problem they inquire into their preconceptions and what they already know and they develop clarity and test hypothesis and at last they draw inferences and generate possible solutions so inquiry approach starts with curiosity and interest and end to the generating possible solutions what are the characteristics of inquiry approach in inquiry approach learning is stimulated by inquiry that is driven by questions or problems in inquiry approach learning is based on a process of seeing knowledge and new understanding it emphasizes on the role of teacher as a facilitator self directed learning with learners taking increasing responsibility for their learning and development of skills and self reflection if you analyze the whole concept of learner centered approaches and you just try to correlate those characteristics here when i was talking about learner centered approaches i was saying that in learner centered approaches the role of the teacher is as a facilitator same as with inquiry approach learners take more responsibility for their learning same as with the inquiry approach and this approach helps in development of a skill for self reflection also it is basically an active approach to learn so what are various stages of inquiry based instruction if you are planning an inquiry based instruction first you need to provide an orientation then the conceptualization is there then investigation conclusion and discussion let us discuss about these steps in detail what do you mean by orientation 
orientation refers to stimulating interest and curiosity among the learners in relation to the problem so you basically facilitate learners or orient learners to the problem about which they need to inquire the topic may be presented by you or topic may be presented or introduced by your learners your learners do the identification of the variables in the problem and they try to define the problem in terms of major outcome then comes the conceptualization conceptualization is basically a process of understanding a concept or various concepts belonging to the stated problem so whatever you problem you have taken learners identify this concepts or sub concepts there and they try to understand that what these concepts are and how they conceptualize basically there are two sub phases of conceptualization the first is question they raise several questions research based questions inquiry based questions on the stated problem and to solve those questions they form several tenable solutions related to that problem which are testable which are verifiable based on the available evidences with them when they conceptualize they basically formulate hypotheses which are generally based on research questions both the questions and hypotheses are based on theoretical justifications and contain independent and dependent variables the main outcome of the conceptualization in, in inquiry approach is that the research questions and the hypothesis which are to be investigated by the learner then comes the investigation learner turns towards action and starts searching for the solution there are many sub phases of the investigation like exploration is there experimentation is there data interpretation is there so what is exploration when a learner frames certain hypothesis then he or she try to gather the information to form the solution so a planned and systematic process to gather information with the intent to finding a relation among the variable involved is called exploration if he or she has developed some strategic plan some design which he or she need to do then comes the experimentation which means making and applying a strategic plan to carry out the action and it is directly linked with the hypothesis formation testing the hypothesis is generally done by the experimentation and what you do in the experimentation you basically manipulate the variables then you collect the data through exploration and experimentation and you analyze the data and in this way investigation completes then comes the conclusion what you have got from your data so learners address the original research question or hypothesis on the basis of data which they have collected on the analysis of the data which they have gathered so they considered that the data whether it is supporting to the answer or it is giving the answer to the result of the study or it is not giving so this phase may produce some time new theoretical insight then comes the discussion in discussion it is basically a process of presenting findings of a particular phase or the whole inquiry cycle by communicating with others or by controlling the whole learning process or its phases by engaging in reflective activities discussion also involves two sub phases communication and reflection in communication basically you disseminate the new knowledge to your peers your teachers experts and others so that they may also review on the basis of constructive comments and they can give you the feedback and reflection is the process of describing critiquing evaluating and discussing the whole or the part of the inquiry reflection is more of an internal process and it can be done through several activities like narrative journal writing questioning writing daily journals there are many ways so what are the advantages of inquiry approach if you use inquiry approach in your classroom your learners use mental process therefore it enhances the intellectual capacity of learners in inquiry approach learning is based on the direct experiences of the learners and it develops the ability of learners for experimentation inquiry approach uses multiple senses of the learners therefore it help learners to understand the concepts more clearly more comprehensively and also with diverse views then comes the limitations 
this inquiry approach basically requires a lot of training for teachers because teachers need to be trained to facilitate learners for learning through inquiry so many teachers are not trained in it then sometimes the classroom strength if it is too much 40 50 60 students are there it is very difficult to apply the inquiry approach in such classroom so the strength of the classroom is always critical for inquiry learning it is feasible if classroom strength is small the school textbooks which we basically use to teach to our students or our students read the books they are not based on inquiry of learning many times so they are basically promoting the rote learning inquiry learning requires plenty of resources but normally schools are short of resources and some people believes that inquiry approach is very time consuming and it is based on a conceptual approach rather than examination oriented any practical approach. So with this I can say that inquiry approach is a very good learner centric approach. You may be a teacher of science, you may be a teacher of mathematics, you may be a teacher of social science, you may be a teacher of language but this approach is beneficial for you. You develop the habit of inquiry in your learners. You facilitate them by creating certain situations where they can inquire about a problem. If problem is related to their daily life, their actual life and it is an authentic problem, your learners will search for an authentic solution. And if learners are able to inquire about a problem and inquire about an authentic problem and they are able to find out the authentic solution, your learning outcomes will be great and you will achieve all your goals which you have decided for learn. So with this, I must say that dear teachers, be ready, use inquiry approach in your classroom. Thank you very much.